the four billion years of Darwinian evolution are now part of common culture. But most people nonetheless tend to think that human beings are in some sense the culmination. There's no particular reason to think that intelligence couldn't develop further. Astronomers know that our sun is less than halfway through its life. It'll be six billion years before the sun flares up, engulfing the inner planets, vaporizing any life that remains on Earth. But any life that remains at that time won't be humans. It'll be life at least as different from us as we are from bacteria, because there's as much time for future evolution on Earth and beyond before the sun dies as there has been to get from the simplest organisms to us. So our future in this universe can tell us something about life in other more advanced universes. So what is the future for intelligence? I think we have the most complex nervous system on Earth. Related to that, we may consider us as the most intelligent species on Earth maybe in the universe, at least our universe, that could be. Uh, we started with a chimpanzee-like brain, and it tripled in, in size over a period of three, two, three million years. You might wonder whether there's any expansion possible. Michael Hoffman has studied the structure of our brain and asked, would a larger brain increase intelligence? We did a study by comparing brain structures in, in primates, starting from very small, relatively primitive primates, up to human beings. What you can do then is to extrapolate these findings to creatures which even have a larger brain than we had. To our surprise, after a particular brain size, something strange happened. There is some maximum in intelligence, in processing power, in cognitive abilities. But beyond that point, you find a decrease in number of structures in the brain. It will go along with a decrease in processing power and information processing, and therefore also with uh, intelligence. It seems that as the organ of intelligence, the brain has reached its limit. If it becomes bigger, communication between the different parts of the brain slow down, and it actually becomes less efficient. So it can't be, hardly be better than we do it now. That's in fact the conclusion of all these calculations. We can't change the technology of our brain. In a way, we are prisoners of our ancestors million years ago, as far as the evolution of the brain is concerned. So unless nature invents a new way for organic intelligence to evolve, it seems that in this universe, intelligence has reached its potential. But some scientists see organic intelligence as only the first stage in evolution. And the next stage, they believe, has already begun. For the first three or nearly four billion years, the driving force of increasing complexity on Earth was evolution, natural selection, sexual selection. But in recent times, in the last few thousand years, it's not evolution any longer, but it's our uh, cultural development uh, that has taken over and now this has been uh, formalized into scientific and technological and medical development. That's where the action is right now. If we become more intelligent, it is because we will learn to use technology or maybe medicine to enhance uh, our own intellectual capacities. And that might happen within a matter of decades. In all these different ways, human beings will use their technical ingenuity to change and modify their own nature. 
Um, that's the transhuman phase of our development, which we're just beginning to enter um, you know, at the dawn of this new millennium. Technology already infiltrates almost every aspect of our lives. But philosophers like Nick Bostrom believe that technology could gradually replace our lives and that the change will be almost imperceptible. A lot of people might choose to change to different medium, um, computational hardware medium, where you wouldn't suffer aging, where your processes of uh, thinking could be speeded up enormously, um, where you could um, transport yourself at the speed of light as information pattern, um, where you could make copies, backup copies of yourselves. You would start by replacing a small bit of the brain, maybe a single nerve cell, with a computer uh, processor that would do the same thing, and then you could replace uh, larger and larger parts, and eventually you would consist of silicon. And that sounds really scary and bad, but if at no point in this process you noticed any difference, and if you ended up with just the same mental life as you had before, then you might think it doesn't really matter so much whether I'm made of silicon or carbon, what's inside my skull, or indeed whether I have a skull, or my whole mental life is implemented on a computer. But what matters rather is what you think and feel and do and how you relate to others. Technology could take intelligence beyond the natural capacity of our biological brains. Through technology, our universe could evolve superintelligence. The concept of superintelligence roughly means um, any kind of intellect that vastly outstrips anything that's possible for humans to do. It wouldn't just be a really clever human. It would be um, a large, uh, by, by a huge amount, uh, superior task. There wouldn't be a confusion about whether it really was very smart or not. Um, it, it would be on a completely different level. We obviously can't conceive of what a superintelligence might be able to achieve any more than a dog can appreciate quantum mechanics. But we can at least quantify things by thinking about computers. We can think about the processing power of computers and the kind of calculations they can do, the degree of complexity they can simulate. We know that over a few decades, computers have evolved from being able to simulate only very simple patterns to being able to create virtual worlds, as it were, with quite a lot of detail in them. And if the computers in this new era are powerful enough, they will be able to simulate the events at the very start of our universe, to test the underlying principle that set our laws of nature so precisely, to play with the parameters of creation, to see what might evolve. If that trend were to continue, then we can imagine computers which will be able to simulate worlds perhaps even as complicated as one we think we're living in. Of course, this raises a philosophical question, could we ourselves be in such a simulation? Could what we think is the universe be some sort of vault of heaven uh, rather than a real thing? In a multiverse, there would almost certainly be beings that have evolved intelligence way beyond ours, with the power to run immensely complicated simulations. Our whole universe could be one of those simulations. So where does that leave us? In a sense, we could be ourselves the uh, creations within this simulation, I suppose. In cutting themselves free from the possibility of our universe being the work of a creator, a god, logic has taken science back to where it started. Could our superintelligence be the god we have always imagined? <laughs>